Hello everyone and welcome back to Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 where you might notice that the world map is looking quite a bit different and that is because I've installed Reshade and I'm gonna test it out with a combination I concocted that I feel might match sort of a late 1950s early 1960s World War II movie feel maybe uh, anyway uh, so we've got uh, just for reference a vignette which does that on the edges and then a tint which I've set to uh, sort of give a little bit more color. You can see the difference there. Actually, it's quite uh, a lot more like a dark, uh, black and white movie there. No, I mean, it's still color, but I mean, it's uh, sort of washed out. So that helps a little bit. The filmic pass does most of the business, you can see. And then a cinematic depth of field, which I've sort of tuned. You can see it sort of makes the letters fuzzy, but not horribly so. I mean, so we, we want to subtle depth of field but not something crazy so yeah a lot of tweaking there but we'll see how it looks and i've got a flight plot here that the game clearly does not expect that the spitfire is going to be able to cover and so we'll see i have fully fueled it and that is our indicated range but we know that the ranges in the menu don't exactly match what the plane can actually do uh, so it's a flight from Iceland, and it is uh, airfield in Hella. Uh, so yeah, I won't make any jokes. Uh, so Hella airfield there, and we are landing at Inverness. And so it's about a 600 nautical mile journey. And we might not make it, we'll see. But we'll see what the Spitfire looks like, and whether I can still fly it along the way. So without further ado... Okay, so I do have the Orbix mesh, the Orbix Iceland mesh installed, just for you to know. And that's free, actually, I believe. It was a sort of free sample mesh. So we can take a look, uh, let's look at the wing there, and get a sense of the color here. In the interior and around. And sort of the quality of this particular look. I'll leave you to judge whether this is a good look. But I think it's it's basic. Oh, I've got the people's names up still. Well, I guess that's just how it's going to be. But uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's sort of... It's reminding me of some movies. Let me put it that way. Okay, so... Releasing the brake. Carefully. <laughs> Like I said, I need practice here. Okay, well, we didn't kill ourselves on takeoff, so that's good. And the gear is stowed. Alright, lots of trim. I will use the GPS, though. So, obviously, we'll have to try and fly really high in order to get the kind of range that we need here. So, climb time. The rotor trim seems actually quite fine right now. I just want to double check whether the fuel load is correct, just in case it reset it on me. Nope, that's fine. That's what we asked for. Although, I should probably reduce my own weight. It always makes me heavy. <laughs> uh, okay, I I've deviated from the flight path, it looks like. Oh, uh, that was just the exit flight path we have to turn now. Okay, well, here we go. I like the dusty look of it. I guess, I don't know how this Spitfire got to Iceland, but it's uh, trying to get back home, apparently. I'm keeping the boost to four. I think that's safe. In better lights here. Well, I don't know how this terrain looked before a new mesh, but it looks fine now, though uh, some of the full scenery textures to the left there are sort of edgy, but that is not too surprising, I guess. Iceland, though, they should be able to get good photo scenery for Iceland, aren't they? I don't know about the oxygen situation. I'm not gathering that it works anyway. 
I believe that above a certain height we get the supercharger automatically on. It's set to auto, I think. Spitfire in some mountains. Well, I believe above 12,000 feet I was supposed to turn on the fuel pressure. So, I have turned it on. I don't know if there's a limited pressure or something like that. Oh, the supercharger is activated, so I'll reduce my throttle to reduce the boost there. Otherwise, we'll probably do too much. Okay, well, now approaching 14,000 feet. Sort of a bit of ice extended out, extending out beyond the coast. Interesting. Oops. Currently 254 knots ground speed. I would like to make sure that this is hopefully less than a two hour flight, so we'll see what we can do. Oh, Spitfire going out from the coast. Wish we had more clouds around. I think that's a pretty legit scene right there. Well, I'm here at 31,380 feet. I think we'll just sort of stay here then. No, seems like we need more port side bias. Seems pretty stable. Well, stable enough for now. Probably wouldn't take my eyes off of it, but. 31,000 feet negative 2 on the boost 2,800 RPM which is probably a little bit high I'll cut down to 2,700 and 331 knots ground speed and this look outside Iceland is still visible back there Okay, now we've started using the bottom tank. We've still got more than an hour left to fly, though. A little bit worrying. Um, cutting down the boost a bit. Well, negative four boost is really getting taxing here. 270 knots. We're going back up to our desired cruising height, but. I'm gonna go back to negative two and then I'm gonna have to redo the rudder trim. It doesn't even actually fully measure the bottom tank. It says contains 48 gallons at takeoff, so. Yeah, I don't know. We've probably used quite a lot then. Well, see, now the wind is sort of a crosswind for us. Unfortunately, at these northern latitudes, all the the projection is all over the place. If we take a look at the size of Iceland versus Britain, there, hmm. and I let it turn a lot, so not entirely helpful. Well, we were doing pretty well until well, we sort of turned. <laughs> and the wind was no longer on our side. Yeah, early on in the flight uh, it was sort of pushing us along a little bit. But during this part, not so much and now we're in much bigger trouble. Well, we're down to 10 gallons. Oh, just went a little bit too far right there. And uh, still an hour away basically mainly because I went back to negative four on the boost. We're still at 31,000 feet though, so we have some, you know, some potential energy, but not that much. Well, I tried to give up some of my altitude in the hope that we could find better wind, but, um, well, not helping a whole lot right now, maybe a little.
it's not quite against us. Maybe a little bit helpful. But I don't know exactly what the relative fuel consumption is at 25,000 feet, which is where we're at right now, versus uh, 31,000. It's not going to matter too much longer. We've got like five gallons left. Well, I guess we can close that for now. It's not like I've done a whole lot of airplane cinematic things, but I always like them. I admire the skill of those who make them, that's for sure. Well now we're only at uh, 22,000 feet and ground speed 245 knots only. Uh, well, there's nothing left in the fuel tank, and we're at 20,000 feet. I'm just gonna start descending quicker here. Okay, more port, more port, more port. Up, 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 it's starting to quit on me. Not, not the best sort of sound, I don't know what you call it, sound mixing, I guess. I mean, it might be realistic, but not quite working right. Probably it's dead by now, right? Really. If I like switch everything off, it's still gonna, it's still gonna do that. Fuel off. Well, we are not particularly close. We're like 180 nautical miles away from where we wanted to be in Burness. And we're not going to make it too much farther. Yeah, the sound the sound needs some work, frankly. I mean, I, I'm sure it doesn't sound great in this situation, but... But... <laughs> It doesn't sound like it's fitting in at all. Stop that noise. <laughs> I've, I've done the fuel cutoff. Oh, there's a tablet. I didn't even know there was... A, uh, I, I think I knew there was a tablet, but I forgot there was a tablet. Huh. V-speeds. Best glide speed. Yeah, well... We're gliding whatever way we can. Is this saying that the drop tank still has fuel? How do I switch to the drop tank? I think it says that the drop tank still has fuel. Hold on a sec. We haven't used any of the external tank fuel. Well, fuel on probably first. Oh shoot. I thought we had drained the drop tank first. Uh, uh, my tablet. Tablet, can you switch to the drop tank? Oh, this is probably not a good time to have figured this out. External fuel tank on. I have no idea what I think I was at 1,500 feet when I figured that out. Okay, all right, we're we're continuing. I probably hurt the engine quite a bit there. <laughs> Thank you, tablet, <laughs> for informing me about my mistake there. All right, 
we can make it to Inverness out as it turns out. I mean, I think with 75 gallons we should be able to. Okay, re. Hold on, let me get my handle on that. All right, uh, more starboard bias. We are on. Uh, we were headed the wrong way right now, and we probably shouldn't go up quite so severely. Well, we're back up to a decent height and cruising right along here. I asked for clouds and we've gotten clouds. Uh, the ones there don't look quite as realistic as I'd like. Uh, maybe this view is the best. Okay, we are back up to more or less 31,000 feet, so... We have 132 nautical miles left, and I think we're in good shape. Of course, I can't actually check the fuel, but considering how the fuel consumption worked for the last bit, I think we had 75 gallons. I can check the fuel with the tablet, though. Cheating as that is, uh, we sort of... We sort of uh, baked that in here. It says oxygen 100, so... Uh, but the oxygen regulator, I guess, doesn't show up. I guess I just turned it on, but I didn't really black out without it, did I? There's also an autopilot that we shouldn't use. <laughs> I don't use autopilot on anything like this. So, yeah, we've got a good amount of fuel left. 53 gallons in the drop tank. It even gives us a range estimate here. That's, uh, that's nice. 200 nautical miles left, huh? Well, looking good. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I knew about that tablet before, because I marveled at all the detail it gave. I remember that, but I had totally forgotten about it for this flight. Uh, that doesn't quite strike me as quite right. Well, it's a very solid sort of cloud we've got under us. <laughs> but I, I guess I, I shouldn't have expected the uh, weather at Inverness to be particularly great, right? Every time I click out of the window to take a look at something, the cannons toggle. I think somebody had asked me about the cannon toggle. Well, it sits right about where it says toggle cannons right there. If you're wondering how to make them show up or disappear. Well, we can see some land up ahead. So that's a fine sight after all the all the business we've been through and of course some land to the right as well so the islands so you can see that on the map there 81 nautical miles to Inverness oh the, the clouds cleared up right in time it looks like we can see Scotland before us quite nicely well, the tint sort of obscures the sharpness of the details, but that might be for the best. Uh, this way it's looking pretty good so far. The landscape in particular, I mean. Interesting pier-like thing sticking out there. I'm not too sure what that is. Maybe a pier. I don't know. Well, even the VFR map has that line there that pier-like structure. There's sort of a that misty cloud right over Inverness there. Okay, we are off supercharger. Well, I don't know if it makes any difference, but I'll turn the fuel pressure knob off now. Yeah, we've got a very very characteristic mist over Inverness, don't we? Flaps and gear. And probably throttle up now. As that will have knocked us down somewhat. Yeah, there's all sorts of fun stuff to our aerodynamics. 
The mist is all the way down. Uh, well, I missed the airfield somehow. BFR map? By a lot. Okay. Let me come around. I sure didn't see it. It's like the weather at this airport is don't land here. Okay. Where is this airport? <laughs> Gosh, let me look outside. Gosh. Oh, there it is. Okay. Uh, hmm. Well, we're not gonna make that. Okay, well, I'll try one more pass. I'm gonna need all the VFR help I can get. I mean, the map. I mean, and hopefully, I don't get caught on some power line. Okay. <laughs> hmm. Okay. Okay, I see it. All right, all right. Okay. Okay, don't bounce. Are we down? Oh no, there we go. Okay, all right. Gently applying brakes. Okay, somehow we survived that. <laughs> that was that was a whole lot of misadventure. But we are here in Inverness. The cloud giving the plane quite a different sort of lighting, so we can judge that versus we normally had a fairly serious glare on us for most of the flight. Okay, well, I'm just going to park it over here, darn it. I don't know what these things are, but... Oh, lights. Well, I don't want to get in the way of the lights, though. Okay. We are parked. And I'm next to this shack. I cleaned this shack. Anyway... <laughs> So there you have it, uh, Spitfire flight from Iceland to Inverness, and well, I think it looked good, but it was sure exciting. That was like two and a half hours, and I think that, that would de definitely be the longest flight i have done with the Spitfire. Let's see what the pad has to say. I have about... 13.9 gallons left there. Doesn't really give a sense of how long I've been flying. Anyway, dynamic engine stresses. Oh, I should have had that on. Oh, oh I'll have to do that next time. Shoot, I I'll put it on right now and hope it saves it. I I'm surprised that wasn't on. Okay. All right, uh, yeah, that's a shame. I feel guilty now. But anyway, with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.